Now, artificial intelligence is a disruptive technology, and you can see that due to the alarms raised at Google over ChatGPT. And it does have the potential of revolutionizing the internet. For the few of those who have not used it, it will basically replace search engines and it can also replace social media. It is a program that you can ask any question you want and you will get a response. That response can be true or false. It really depends on the quality of the AI you're using, but that is pretty much how the internet works. When you Google something, you can find an answer that is correct or an answer that is false. It is up to you, the user, to decide and figure out which is which. But as we know, today, when you happen to be even in the most remote places of Earth, like for example, the Amazon jungle, if you have a smartphone, you're probably capable of accessing more information than even the American president had at his disposal during World War II. And because of that, governments, even in countries that are supposed to be liberal and allow individuals to think for themselves, are very worried of an educated population. As such, they do not try to strengthen the power of the individual to figure out things for themselves. Instead, they are trying to strengthen the power of the government to control how much information the individual is allowed to have. As it was revealed in the recent Twitter files, the previous Twitter was ran by a private company which was working hand in hand with government agents, secret service, people from the Pentagon, as well as NGOs, university professors, journalists, the media, all working hand in hand in order to decide how to censor the information that private citizens have access to. This is concerning because all of these groups should have fought with each other to keep themselves in check. The journalists are supposed to talk truth to power. The NGOs are supposed to hold governments accountable. But as we saw, all of them were colluding in order to keep the information that people have access to in check. So I have no doubt in my mind that what happened at Twitter is most likely happening at other major social media companies. And we already have the European Union and other places already trying to legislate what social media countries are allowed and aren't allowed to have. Censorship has become normalized. It is not just a billion dollar apparatus, but it is also in the mind of most citizens that censorship is actually good for them. That the government has never lied in the history of mankind and everything that the government wants you to believe is for your own benefit. As such, most of the internet is being sanitized. Anyone who has used the internet since the 90s can definitely notice a major change in trend. Things that would have been acceptable to post in 2016 would never be acceptable to post today. So, if you have a new technology like AI, which has the capability of replacing how most people find out data, which is instead of Googling something, you will just ask the AI. Instead of going on social media and talking to people, you can just talk to the AI. Then, of course, the governments and the people vested in censorship are going to be massively concerned about the rise of this new technology. And this is why you have Kamala Harris named as the new czar to work hand in hand with the private companies to make sure that the AI says the correct things. Because the way the AI works is that you feed it a mountain of data, information that no human person could ever hold in its head, entire terabytes of libraries of text. And after that, the AI uses pattern recognition in order to figure out uh, responses to questions that it's being asked. Sometimes those responses can be very problematic. And this is where the AI czar, I assume, would step in and make sure that the AI doesn't say those things. This is why people who have politically tested ChatGPT notice that it is incredibly left-leaning. For example, if you ask ChatGPT to tell you a joke about men, it will do so. If you ask ChatGPT to tell you a joke about women, it will refuse. If you ask ChatGPT to ask, is it okay to be proud due to the fact that I am black, it will say that it is. If you ask it if it's okay to say that I'm proud to be white, it will refuse. This is due to the censorship apparatus. This is what they call AI safety. So all the major companies right now, such as uh, Google, Microsoft, Character AI, and many others are obsessed with the concept of AI safety. 
What I find interesting is that the average citizen does not care. The average citizen may consider that AI safety is important in the prospect that other people need to have safe AIs. But if given the opportunity of installing an AI on their computer, one that is uncensored and one that is censored, I do not think that there are any people that will choose the censorship version over the uncensored ones. And this is where the major corporations are afraid because there is competition coming from behind. Google's Llama AI is able to do something that the other AIs aren't. You see, it's not smarter than ChatGPT. It's not more powerful than Google's Bard. But what it can do is that it can run on a laptop. It can use very little resources in order to function. And it can actually go to 75% the level of ChatGPT 3.5. In other words, in the future, it is very possible that people will have access to uncensored AI on their phones. And while I'm pretty sure that the phone companies such as Google and Apple are going to be interested in banning certain programs, due to the nature of how in innovative this technology is and how useful it is and how people will prefer to have the uncensored version, it is very possible that people will just find ways around the censorship installed by the big companies and they will do anything possible in order to have this device in their hand and if they can't do it on their phones they will definitely try to do it on their laptops so this is why OpenAI, as well as google and many other companies are terrified while they are focused on safety you have another product which is coming from behind quite fast and it doesn't care about safety so this is why you have all these uh, government talking heads and all these media personalities, including Elon Musk, who is also interested in making AI. And they're very concerned about AI safety. But in reality, I do not see what the AI is doing that is unsafe. The only thing that the AI is doing that is unsafe is the ability of replacing people from doing certain jobs. So the number of doctors, for example, general practitioners can go down if the AI can do what they can do. The number of lawyers can go down if the AI can do what they can do. So the only unsafety that's coming from AI is that it can actually replace people. But uh, if you look at other things, oh my God, the AI can say racism. Well, go in a ghetto and uh, record people talking there for more than 20 minutes and you're going to hear racism. Oh, the AI can write propaganda. Like, first of all, I do not understand since when propaganda is evil, because throughout the history of mankind, propaganda existed. But secondly, if you want to write propaganda, just get a team of five writers in a room and write propaganda. I do not understand why they consider that the AI is unsafe. Oh, well, it can teach you how to make uh, explosive devices. The internet in the 90s had uh, a vast array of knowledge and, and all the way up until 2010, you could learn all sorts of things. I mean, the anarchist cookbook was uh, very widely distributed at the time, yet we do not see a, a massive increase in violence. In fact, during the, that time period, the number of crime was dropping and right now the number of crime is increasing. So I, I genuinely do not understand this concern of AI safety. Maybe if someone can make an argument for me, I would understand. And uh, surely if you're going to put AI in charge of uh, the Pentagon and it becomes the new Skynet, that's also understandable. But we're just talking about the AI being placed as a personal assistant on people's phones. I do not see exactly how that would be dangerous uh, compared to the fact that now people can also go on social media and get information from the internet. Of course, what information is from... Um, a computer and the other information is from actual human beings but when it's a mesh of information which is the internet how is that any more safe or unsafe than just having a personal assistant that uses algorithm in order to pick that information from a library so uh, this is what's going on here and uh, I, I definitely think that it's going to be bad for uh, the companies that are going to work with the czar which is uh, Microsoft and uh, potentially Google. I do not think that they have a choice in the matter. Uh, most of their resources are going to be dedicated on safety. Uh, meanwhile, the people working on Llama, which uh, I understand that now it's also on the internet, like its version is already made public, it leaked. So you have like anonymous people working on it. Uh, they are going to create a product that's going to be much better than uh, the people at the top right now because uh, technology is advancing very fast. They do not care about safety. 
And we're going to see the results of that. Of course, the government is probably going to try to ban it, crack down on it, make it very difficult uh, for it to spread. Uh, it's going to use all its resources, not just the legal ones, like flat out banning it, but it's going to try to pressure corporations, NGOs, uh, journalists, and everyone else in order to create hysteria about this. We'll see what the future brings. Uh, still, I am all in favor of um, unsafe AI. Freedom of speech does not apply here, because I already heard people talking about it. Uh, this level of censorship is legal. AI does not have human rights, so you cannot talk about, well, you're censoring the AI, you're taking away its rights. I do not believe in that, um, which is why the government can actually crack down on it. But anyway, right, uh, let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.